What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Scott. Welcome to the Scott Reports. Today, I'm bringing you a manga review of the Promised Neverland Chapter 49. Big, big things in this chapter. Then again, when isn't it big things with the Promised Neverland? Because even when it seems like nothing's really going on, they seem to always hit you with some type of reveal. Like, first and foremost, finding out that Ray is also a god in cooking. I mean, the kid's just a genius in every sense of the word. But something else this chapter also did was hype you up to think that Emma's actually about to do something and she probably won't. So basically, in this chapter, Emma is being shown the wild beyond what's outside in the world with um sung ju she asked to accompany him to see what's going on and the biggest thing that we could take out of this chapter is something that i've been looking forward to for a very long time and we finally got the significance or what those flowers mean you know the flowers that we seen on the dead body of connie as well as crone and we see the demons putting into their meals we finally found out what those were they're called Vita. These plants are like a vampire type of plant. And what it does is suck the remaining blood and life out of prey, basically. Because we saw like a little bit of a glimpse of Dark Emma in this chapter. As you know, they were saying, since you're going on this journey to go to the human world, it's things that you don't know about this world. It's things that you need to know. This is a lesson that Song Ju was telling her. And... She said, okay, well, teach me how to survive. Teach me how to get, you know, the items that I need. Teach me how to get past the demons and everything that's out there. Teach me how to take a life. Now, we've seen Dark Emma before, and as soon as we think she's going one direction, she ends up staying in the direction that's, that she's in. And it kind of threw me back at first for her to say, teach me how to take a life because I automatically thought she was going zero to 100 and just wanted to start picking off demons. But no, that wasn't the case at all. Because if you think about it, when you kill someone, you have to have a certain mindset to do it. And one of two things happens. You either become a psycho and you keep wanting to kill people or, you know, you kill somebody and you're the type of person that would regret it all your life. It weighs down. It's one of the most worst things that you ever did. And you never want to do it again. And I don't see Emma being either one of those people. So what she actually meant by that was teach me how to take a life so I can survive. Teach me how to get the plants. Teach me what's poisonous. Teach me what's good. Teach me what to cook, what to keep for myself. Teach me how to get fish whatever it is out here so i can eat so for a while there i was looking like damn it might have got dark but then i was like "Woo! okay she just wants to learn how to survive i mean it still kind of incorporates as far as taking a life because think about it something that they're really weighing in now with the promised neverland is the fact that these demons are just trying to eat just like how we eat cows chickens or whatever if, unless you're a vegetarian or what have you we eat things and kill things to survive too. Like I love animals and deers and all that, but you know what? I love hamburgers, so that cow has to go. I'm sorry, but we're beginning to see that side of things as well with the demons. And that thing even crossed Emma's mind in this chapter where, you know, like these demons need to eat too. So we just, even though it's bad that we're killing other living things, we have to do what we have to do. She learned how to use a crossbow in this, well, not I mean, a bow and arrow in this. And I don't know, was it on purpose? Was it like a um, translation um, error that I've seen or something or a scan error? Because one panel had her aiming the bow and it was the wrong way. But then the next one actually showed her shooting it. It was the right way. I don't know if that was progression. Did they do that on purpose to show how fast she learned or what? But that was kind of funny because I was looking like she had the bow the wrong way. But anyway... She shot like I, it was some type of animal. I don't remember if it was like a bird or, you know, like a rabbit or something. But anyway, she killed it. And of course, naturally, she felt sorry for it because it still had life. It was still laying there with a little bit of life left. And that's when Shang Ju gave her the flower um, that is called Vita. And he said, take this, put it into your prey. And this is where things get juicy because you know these demons, they say they will eat anything besides demons. And with this flower, Sung Ju tells her that when you put this flower into your prey and put it up to the guys, if it blooms, it means it was meant for you to eat it. So that just blows my mind right there because even though, you know, it's like the pack of demons that follow this religion with Musica and Sung Ju that we've seen and we've seen the demons at the beginning, we know that they use this ritual as well, but it might be just be to their own twisted desires or maybe they all feel this same way as just a perversion of how they decide to do it because we've seen this flower in the body of Connie 
in the body of Crone and all the people that, you know, die and go away. And Emma points that out as well. She's like, I've seen this flower before in the bodies of my fallen ones. So it's pretty interesting to know how religious per se that these demons are and their life and how they live. And I say it week after week after week as of late as we've been in this William Minerva arc, a search for William Minerva. I was really going to be invested in this series when we start to get to know the demons and what they can do and how they feel about things. Because now we see they have lives of their own. They have philosophies of their own. And now that flower came into play. Again, another theory of mine just debunked because I thought the flower was the thing in the ear or something. Maybe it was some type of mechanism. So when they escape, it explodes and comes out. But then we saw them put it in Crone and we thought it was just like some type of dinner seasoning. It's been all types of theories going around about what these flowers are. In this chapter, we find out that it's basically a rite of passage to eat your prey. So that is interesting. It's amazing at the same time. And this chapter felt like it was really quick. But at the same time, we got so much because we're beginning to see a little bit of conflict with Emma. I don't necessarily know if it's conflict, but now she's kind of beginning to see that these there are demons out there that just need to eat too, just like how we need to eat. They're doing the same thing. We're seeing a little bit of development in Emma because yeah, if she can hunt, I'm pretty sure she's going to eventually have to start using these skills in order to defend herself as well. So even though this was just used for hunting, I'm pretty sure that's going to make her a beast when she has to get out here and fight some of these things on her own. And of course, the fact that this flower has been foreshadowed since the beginning of the series, that's big in itself because we've seen this literally since the first chapter of the series. We're coming up on chapter 49. Wow, we're almost a year in on Promise Neverland now. It usually tell us when we're going to get a color page so we're not going to get one for the 50th chapter which is kind of weird but i bet we're probably going to get damn near an entire color volume when we get to 52 signifying one year of the promise neverland greatness and i cannot wait for that this was a really deep chapter and i'm beginning to care about song ju more than i should because I got a feeling he's going to die and he's probably going to die protecting these kids because he's becoming such a good character that I don't want to see them go away. It's like he said, I'm just going to escort you guys to where you need to go and then I'm off. But I really want him to stay. They're going to need him. They're going to need his help when they get over to this human side or whatever. Or they're going to definitely need him once the pursuers catch up to him because you know they are. And all that's going to come to a head. And I got a feeling by chapter 52, if not chapter 52 itself, shit is going to hit the fan. And I cannot wait to get to it. So guys, let me know what you thought of this chapter in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts, your theories. It's always fun to talk to you guys about this and see what you're thinking as well. And let's see what else we can think of and see if that gets confirmed or debunked. So far, I don't even want to know my bad and average on this series right now because everything that I theory about, I don't want to be a bad reviewer and say it was wrong because that's the beauty of the chapter. You never, or this series, you never know what you're going to get. But that's the fun part to see what you can predict and see if it was right or wrong. So I know I got something right, but I know I got a lot wrong too. Anyway, I'm starting to babble on, so I'm going to get out of here. Guys, if you like this video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If there's not a shortage of content, you indulge on on this channel. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. But you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that. So thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon.